I don't trust anyone. He growls at you with all this. I want you feral. And I want them all to know you're mine. Oh my god, that was so crazy. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I finally got it. Oh, the angels are singing. I finally got this book. Oh my gosh, wait. I need to tell you what happened with this book. Just a second. Oh my god, I'm so old! Okay. I need to tell you all what happened with my Iron Flame debacle. Jasper, stop licking my books. This is mommy's prized possession. You don't know what I had to do to get these books, okay? I pre-ordered both the special edition of Fourth Wing and Iron Flame. I was anticipating it. I pre-ordered both of them on Amazon. The day comes November 7th. It says it's getting here by 10 p.m., but it hasn't even shipped yet. And I'm just like watching it and watching it all day. Everybody else has gotten their copies, it feels like, but I know that there were a lot of people who also still haven't gotten theirs. I was just so annoyed. I'm like, what is the point of pre-ordering it? I started to see everybody getting terrible, like bad copies of like misprints or it was damaged or stuff like that. And I was just getting so anxious about not being able to get my copy. <laughs> I know it's so ridiculous, but the book people will get it. And I was determined to get my copies and my special edition of Fourth Wing didn't even say when it was gonna come. The Iron Flame eventually said that it was coming the next day and I had a feeling it was gonna be a bad copy. So I was like, I'm just gonna go to Barnes. I know that these have a potential to sell out quickly and I want to get them now. So I went to Barnes the next day and looked through every single book to find the perfect ones and I picked them and I brought them home and then a couple hours later this one finally got delivered. But I am so glad that I got, I went to Barnes because this one showed up. There is a, there's like a part of the book that's just like shaved off the top. It's just like there's an angle here. It's like shaved off the top. Some of the sprayed edges are damaged. The pages in the back were like folded in on themselves. I fixed it, but they came, it came just like all battered. Uh, the binding is coming off already. I don't know if you can tell. It's very different from this one. This one was printed in Italy. This one was printed in the US. You can kind of tell that they're a little different. So if you're online, if you're in this universe, you know that there's like this big, de a lot of people are getting misprints or damaged copies. Mine's not that bad, but I was like, you know what? I picked up my perfect one, so I'm just gonna return this one. But what an ordeal. I am going to start this today. I finished Act War, if you haven't seen my video for that. Go check it out. I read the second and third book in that series. And immediately after the emotional turmoil of Aquawar, I'm like, let's just get back into another fantasy series that might tear my heart out. I'm gonna take you on the journey that we have been waiting for. I am not gonna tell you any big spoilers in this, but if you haven't read the first one, there might be spoilers because we're getting into the second one now. So if you don't want fourth wing spoilers, then maybe don't watch this. I'm not gonna give you any big spoilers in this. If I do, I'll timestamp it and put it at the end. many, many days later. I'm at chapter 11, only on page 95. This book is going so slow. It's partially that I'm busy and not dedicating like enough time to sit down and actually focus on it for a while so I can get through it. It's also that like the first roughly 100 pages of this book have been kind of boring. I am invested in the characters. I want to see where this goes. It just feels like nothing's happening in this beginning and I'm not like eager to pick it up, which is not how the first book went at all. I just wish like something would happen. Something kind of finally did happen. So I'm hoping that we are gaining some momentum. I don't know, I open it and I read one chapter and I'm like, okay. And then I put it down, go to bed, go to sleep. I don't know. This is like not keeping my attention or wanting. I don't want to like continue reading it. 
more than a chapter at a time. I also saw that this book, even though it's like over 600 pages, that it has a larger word count than Crescent City, which is 800 pages, because the font is very small. But on the Kindle, it says it's 878 pages, which is a lot. I feel like it's going slow right now. So maybe that like intimidation of how big it is is getting in my head. Today is the day before Thanksgiving. I want to just like sit down and read for a bit and I'm tired and so it just feels good to just sit in the afternoon, chill and read. So that's what we're gonna do today. supposed to like Imogen, but I don't like her still. <laughs> I just don't want her here. The thing about this book and with the first book, there were so many side characters that they all blend together in my head. I don't know one from the other really. I feel like in the book, you, she makes it seem like you're supposed to know who they are and like supposed to differentiate them. There are just so many of them and there aren't a whole, they don't, one of them doesn't shine, except for Rhiannon, I guess. But even then, like all of them are just side characters and they all kind of are the same to me. So maybe this book kind of clears that up. I figured out my issue. <laughs> I figured out the issue. I think I told you that my cousin is reading Akamoff and I'm reading Iron Flame and we're both like struggling to get through them. But the other one has read it and we are telling each other, keep going, it gets better. So I have been struggling through the first half, as you know. I figured out how to do Libby and downloaded the audiobook. What a concept. And now I'm flying through this thing. And I got to chapter 36. If you know chapter 36, you know what I'm talking about. It was crazy. And now I'm like tempted to take back everything I said. But I also don't, like the first half did not have to be that dull and boring. Chapter 36 was crazy. So that's why I sat down to record and update you because this is nuts. It's time to get back into it. I'm almost done with part one, which my cousin said is when it gets good. So I'm gonna just like, Sit and read now. Say a prayer. This is getting so crazy. Okay, wait, I don't know if anybody saw this, but there was something that like Rebecca Yaros was doing press. Somebody, they asked her like, what is a line from the book or what can you like, what's a sneak preview? And she said something like, um, this, is the, this is the quote I love to get from the book. I undid Dane's belt buckle and everyone was like, oh no, 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 not Dane. Meanwhile, I'm so toxic that I was like, okay, but I kind of want them to for the drama. <laughs> I kind of want them to go at it for the drama. I know, I'm toxic, we know this. It would have been a funny story. It would have been interesting. I don't, I haven't gotten to that quote yet. I'll let you know when I do. Hopefully it's not like a spoiler. I'll let you know. I just love that they can talk to dragons. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> That's so cool. I'm going to loose on you. His stomach flexes as he lifts his head to watch me. He growls. You really want this? I want you, Feral. He grabs the pillow and throws it to the floor. I want them to hear. He says, withdrawing slowly, stroking every inch of me. <sighs> God, you're fucking perfect. You feel so damn good. There are <laughs> two words is beyond me. And I want them all to know you're mine. Oh my God, that was so crazy. <laughs> I can't listen to Spice in audiobook form. It's like, it's simply too much. I don't like this narrator. Like if I didn't 
have to listen to her, I wouldn't be listening to her. I don't know, she uses the same voice for like anyone that's against them. It's like the same like evil witch voice for like even men and it's just wrong. The spice is hard to listen to because she talks really fast. I mean, I do have it at 1.25 speed. She's just like talking as if it's like a really intense like uh, battle scene. It's not, it doesn't flow right <laughs> with the sexy scene. I'm doing my skincare. It's still very entertaining. I somehow listen or read spicy scenes at the worst times. It's always like randomly will decide I want to read first thing in the morning with my breakfast and that'll be the time when I hit a spicy scene or it'll be like right now at 11 p.m. and I'm trying to wind down and go to sleep or it'll be I'll decide to like start reading right before somebody's about to come over and it will be of a spicy scene and then someone comes over and I'm like what? Does that happen to anyone else? Or is it just me? <laughs> I last talked to you last night in the middle of a spicy scene and I literally just turned it off. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to listen to this anymore. <laughs> and then I forgot that that happened and I went for my walk this morning and put my earphones in and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's where we left off. I'm gonna continue listening to Iron Flame this week, and that's all from me. I finally finished Iron Flame. It took me a month to read this book, and in the last like half, I just ended up listening to the audiobook because it was dragging. So here are my final thoughts. I gave it a three stars because there were some moments that I was like, okay, I'm kind of interested and I like was able to get through it, but if it were any other book and not in the Fourth Wing series, I probably would have DNF'd this book. I found it to be extremely long for no good reason. I felt like it dragged out. I feel like it could have been 300 less pages and would have gotten the job done. It seems like no one edited this book and I don't mean like grammatical or spelling, but it's like no one was like, mm, maybe we should take this part out because it's not that necessary. They just left everything in. And like, I don't care for those scenes that are so, the scenes that are so long about her training her power. I feel like other authors and fantasy novels are like, like we trained for this many days and explain it a little bit and then like move on. But this had like whole chapters on it and it was just too much. By the end of it, the big like twist at the end, I didn't really care for. And I know it's supposed to be a big deal and like really shock you. But like after 600 pages in teeny tiny print, I didn't care that much. Will I continue reading the series? Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not gonna like go to Barnes & Noble that day and get the third book. Like the hype is gone for me. I really hope the first book wasn't like a one-hit wonder, but this did not live up to the hype. I felt like the romance scenes were kind of bland compared to the last book. Again, like I just didn't care as I was reading the majority of this book. I don't, I felt so detached from it. Somebody wrote this really fantastic review. Well, damn, this was incredibly disappointing. I don't even really know where to start with this review. The writing was genuinely bad. It's plain as simple as that. I thought it was pretty bad. I wouldn't say like it was unreadable, but it just was not very good in my opinion. This review also says that the characters, both Zayden and Violet, just don't have quite the same character depth as they did in Fourth Wing. This review says, I don't know what happened to Violet between this one and the previous book, but I don't recognize her whatsoever. She was the perfect balance of badass with a clever and sharp mind, but now this girl has completely disappeared. Instead, we get this whiny, insecure idiot with a single rational thought. I suddenly couldn't stand her anymore. She said, same goes for Zayden. He suffered from a major character assassination as well. He used to be strong, mysterious, intriguing, but he was so flat. And I kind of agree with this in the sense that like anytime he came into the picture, I was like, I do not care. I preferred her going back to Dane because I thought that would have been interesting. Anytime Zayden was in it, he was just annoying and was like, I can't just answer questions. You have to ask them. And it was like the same 
story over and over again every chapter. Thank you to this person. They wrote a very nice long review and maybe you can go check it out on Goodreads. They gave it a two stars. I gave it a three stars because that just felt right. Does it? <laughs> I gave it a three stars. That's what I have to say on that. So let me know in the comments below what you thought of this book, if you've read it. I'm assuming you have if you, I mean, I didn't give any major spoilers, so maybe you didn't read it, but I still recommend you reading it if you read Fourth Wing. I do wanna see what you think about this book. Maybe you'll like it. Maybe I am off on this one. Other people really enjoyed it. So I'm curious to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below if you've read it or if you want to read it. I'm so curious to know what you'll think. And if you enjoyed this reading vlog, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell so you're always up to date on my next video, and I hope you feel so elevated, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Okay, I realize I probably am gonna wanna do a spoiler section. So this is the spoiler section. <laughs> I haven't really seen any spoilers. I've been able to avoid them pretty well, so I really don't know what happens at all. I saw one spoiler and it like is such a small one and I was so dumb. I was, it said, it was a TikTok and it was two slides and it said spoil, like iron flame spoilers pointing to the next slide and I still swiped. <laughs> so dumb. But the only spoiler I saw was that Jack Barlow is still alive and he just like comes back and then it's just like nothing, he's just like back and then he like saves Violet again and that's as far as I've gotten. So I don't know how he plays into the rest of the book. I, that's, I'm just saying that's the only spoiler I've seen and it's not even that big of a spoiler, I don't think. I really don't, I really have no idea what's gonna happen. I don't trust anyone. I, this is how I feel about Dane. I, to be honest, I have to be honest with you that like, I hate Dane, but I also don't. And like, he was almost gonna not take Violet's side and then he did and now they're like, now we're like, is Dane on our side now? I'm halfway through by the way. I don't know, I'm like, he's like kinda hot. Zayden's being like a little too perfect for me right now. Like, <laughs> I'm so toxic. But no, I don't, I, I guess the point is like, I don't hate Dane as much. Did that clarify things for you? <laughs> Maybe this is still a spoiler. Yeah, this is definitely in the spoiler section. Can we talk about Zayden finally saying that he loved Violet? Oh, I, went, I meant to go back to that and highlight it. I'll go back. I'm grateful my life is tied to yours because it means I won't have to face a day without you in it. Oh, that was so hot. Hot. That's what I mean by he's a little too perfect. 